In this video, I want to show you a tip on how to access AngularJS's scope within Google Chrome's console to help you debug AngularJS apps better. Hi, I'm Michael, and this is Code Life. In these videos, I like to show tips and tricks for programming. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to access the AngularJS scope from the Google Chrome console. It's a cool way to be able to actually visualize and see the scope, see the current values on the scope, without actually having to be in a debugger and on a breakpoint. So let's jump into the code and take a look at this. So to demonstrate this tip, I've created a simple little Angular app here. So I've got an HTML file. We've got an Angular app with one controller. I've created an input field that has a variable of name. And then I've got a H1 down here with the ng if that if the name is populated to show hello name. So this is what we'll be using to demonstrate this tip today. So flip over to our live page. So here's our application, our label, our input field. So in here we can type a name and we see that our name is echoed out to the page. So let's say that you're wanting to debug and actually see what does the scope of this controller look like. So if we go and say, well, let's go ahead and right click and inspect our input field. So then Chrome opens up the dev tools, it highlights that node, and a cool trick within Chrome is that it creates a local variable for the console that's dollar sign zero, which is actually a reference to the selected DOM element that you have selected within the page. So if we go down here in the console, if we do dollar sign zero, hit enter, and you can see it actually shows us that dollar sign zero variable is a reference to that element. So within Angular, Angular attaches the scope onto elements within the DOM. So if we want to be able to see what is the actual scope for this input element, we actually can reference the Angular object within console, grab the element, pass it in dollar sign zero as the element that we want to grab for this, and then say grab the scope for that element. If we hit enter, now we can see in the console down here that we now have, move these up, just a little more room. So here is the scope for that element. So if we go back and look at our code, we know that the name variable is attached to the scope for the first controller. The first controller is tied to this div element and this input is nested within that div element. So we can see here, this actually walked up the DOM elements so it found that controller and then it's displaying the scope on that controller. And here we can see name and there's our variable. So we actually go up here and change our name. If we go down and fetch our scope again, we now can see that name has changed. So that's a quick way to be able to actually see the scope on any of the elements within our Angular app. So another cool trick is for our debugging, let's say we actually wanted to update that name variable on the scope. So we actually can go in here and say, one, well, we could reference the variable and we can see the variable is currently code live. But we can also set the variable down here. So if I change this to Michael and I hit enter, our page didn't update. But if we go take a look again, we can see that our scope has been updated. But why didn't our page update? The page didn't update because the actual digest method or digest loop didn't actually run for our page. But we can force that to run down here in the console as well by doing dollar sign apply or dollar sign digest on our scope. When we hit that, that forces the actual digest loop to run on our Angular page. And now we see that the scope has been evaluated and our app has been updated to reflect the current value that was in our scope object. So another cool trick here too is if we want to go and create a live expression. So in here, if we do angular dots 
element dollar sign zero dot scope and actually on this every scope has an ID so if we do dollar sign ID and we put that as there Oop. hello we forgot our parentheses so now we click out of there we can see that the current scope for element dollar sign zero is ID two so if I click on this element we can see it's still even though our element is changing they're still bound to that same scope of two. But one thing that's interesting is when we click down to here, which is still nested underneath our controller, our scope ID changed. And the reason for that is this ngif directive on this H1 actually has its own scope. And that scope is different than say this scope. And if we actually walk up our DOM and go say to our ng app, you'll notice that that is scope ID one. That's because that is the root scope for our Angular app. So another quick trip, just another quick tip, a way to be able to go through and kind of see what scope is on what element within your page. So another thing that you'll notice is what Angular does is when it binds a scope to an element, it adds a class called ng-scope. So that's where we can tell us there's a scope bound to this uh, element, a scope bound to this element, and we can see here there's a scope bound to this element. So we see those were our three scopes. If we wanted to quickly have a way to visualize those on the page and see what elements have a scope, so we can take advantage of that class to be able to visualize the scopes that are on within our page. So if we create a CSS class for scope. So let's do say a border that is one pixel solid block. Let's throw some margin on it and some padding. So save that. Now we go back to our page. And here we can see our our three scopes. So we have that root scope on the app, we have our scope here around our controller, and then there's that scope around that ng if. So, well, there you go. A cool way to be able to access the AngularJS scope from the Google Chrome console. I hope you found this helpful. I know I did. It helped give me a better insight into how AngularJS and scope work. Hopefully you liked the video. If so, hit that like button and leave a comment below and tell me what your tips and tricks are on debugging AngularJS. And make sure and hit that subscribe button if you want to know about future videos that I create. I don't have many out there yet, but I hope to create a lot more in the future. And so hopefully you'll find those as useful as you found this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. All the other normal things like subscribe to the video if you want to know about... Can I not say that line very well?